We are gathered before you today. Minister to everyone here by yourself in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let no flesh be hard. Amen. Let all glory be returned to you, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's have our seat. God bless us. I will be speaking to us this morning on what I tie to. The blessedness of the fear of God. The blessedness of the fear of God. Looking at that topic, it means that there are blessings abound in fearing God. There are blessings attached to God's fear. There are blessings. Proverbs chapter 10 verse Chapter 9, but rather verse 10. Proverbs 9, 10. It says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. The knowledge of the holy is understanding. So, you need wisdom. Just as the book of James, as, I mean, advice law says, Is there anyone among you lack wisdom? Let him ask of God that give liberally. You need wisdom? It starts, it's rooted in the fear of the Lord. You need knowledge and understanding. It's rooted in the fear of the Lord. There are two GFs. It's my own terminology. G for God, F for whatever you want to use it for. There are two GFs in this earthly realm that we operate in. One is early, productive, and profitable. The other one is unhealthy, unproductive, and unprofitable. All believers can be vivant in prayer, can do different things, but fear of God is very, very important if we want to really go far. As believers, we have every fear towards God. Because God himself is a loving creator. God is not, I mean, it's not scaring anyone. It's not his will to scare anyone. Christians should have every fear towards God. Not the panic kind of fear. Not the kind of fear, uh, in quote, fear. The meaning of fear is not, uh, what I'm looking, what we are looking at today is not the literal meaning of fear. As you go on, you understand better. But our own fear towards God must be heavy. The fourth G L is general fear. General fear, which is the normal fear as in the literal meaning of fear, which is an unpleasant pain or emotion, unpleasant emotion caused by anticipated uh, anticipation or awareness of danger. You're anticipating danger. You're anticipating something negative. Then that fear comes within your, from your heart. Fear arises with a threat of harm. Either physical, emotional, psychological, real, or imagined. So when you think there is a threat, then fear comes in. Threat to life. Threat to your position. Threat to your expectation. Fear comes in. But that is not actually the kind of fear we are talking about. To digress a little bit, 
for so many to be successful, some fear must be overcome. Some fear has to be overcome. Many have lost courage to do what they need to do. So the first fear that must be overcome is fear of criticism. People must talk, whether you like it or not. If you don't want anybody to talk about you, then maybe you are not existing. It's only the dead that they will not speak about. If you are alive, somebody must say something about you, negative or positive. When Jesus was alive, did everybody get saved? No. Some people didn't believe. Even the Israelites that he died for, up to tomorrow, some of them are still believing that Messiah has not come. Is that bad? So when Jesus was alive, Jesus did not heal everybody that was sick. But as many that came in contact with him, they were healed. Praise the name of the Lord. So, and so many people were saying different things about Jesus. Some people say he cast away the devil by the spirit of Bazibah. And all sorts. Some of them disdain him. He's not the son of a carpenter. So what does it have to tell us? So many people did not believe him. So many people spoke against him. In fact, they beat him. They spat on him. They did so many atrocities to him. But Jesus, the Bible recorded that he was without sin. He stood his ground until the mission was accomplished. So people must talk. Don't listen to what people say. Talk is cheap. What did I say? Talk is very cheap. Anybody can open their mouth and speak. But you must be focused. Many people are discouraged today because somebody has criticized you. But there is a dream God has given you. But because of criticism, you are dropping it. No, you cannot reach your goal that way. You must overcome fear of criticism. I'm going to run because of our time. Number two, you must overcome fear of failure. Failure is not really failure in the real sense of it. The man that invented ball said something to, the, to, the, I mean, to someone that told him, oh, you have failed thousands of times. said, no, I did not fail. For someone looking at what the man has done, so you have done this uh, 999 times, you did not get it. So how, how do you, why do you say you are not a failure? Say, no, I did not fail. I've only discovered 999 ways to do it that will not get it right. That is his own definition. I, I did not fail. So you are not a failure until you accept that you are one. Praise the name of the Lord. Your consent is needed for you to be called a failure. And the scripture says, a righteous man falleth how many times? Seven times. But what does he do again? So it's not, the problem is not in falling. People are falling, but do you want to remain on the floor? If you decide to remain on the floor, then you are one, you are a failure. But if you rise again, if you rise again, you cannot be counted as failure. We must overcome the fear of offending others. Whether you like it or not, if you really want to move forward in life, you will offend some people. Some people will not just lack, like what you are doing. But if you want to remain focused, you will offend people. And that is just it. Fear of poverty. Fear of old age. Fear of success. I will not be able to go deep into those things. But I want us to read the scripture. Like I said, that was a digression. First John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. Verse 16. First John 4, 16. If you are there, shout hallelujah. First John 4, 16. I read. And we have known, 
and believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And he that dwells in love dwells in God. And God in him. God is what? God is love. He that dwells in love dwells in God and God in him. Verse 18. That was verse 16. I jump to verse 18. Praise the Lord. Says there, there is no fear, rather, there is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out what? Fear. fear. Because fear has torment. He that fear is not made perfect in love. So, what the scripture is saying here is God is love. So the same God that is love cannot be a terror to you. Praise the name of the Lord. So God is love. If you are in God, the love of God is in you. God is in you. You are in God. So and the love, love cast out every fear. When you have love in your heart, for instance, if somebody uh, come into the church and bring, maybe bring a pack of chocolates. If you love that person, you will eat the chocolate. But if something is in your heart saying that, hmm, I don't know what is inside this chocolate though, you may not eat. It means there is fear in you. And the scripture says, perfect Lord does what? Cast out fear. Cast out fear. At our uh, spare time, let's read the book of um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It talks about love in details. And we will are able to read that and digest it. I tell you, you will be a better person. God's kind of fear does not torment. God's kind of fear, blessed, it doesn't torment. So there is God's fear, fear, I mean God's fear, and there is general fear. General fear is the one that torments. God's fear is another thing entirely. It is a way of respecting, only respect to God, adoring God. The way that you worship God with your heart, with your life. God's fear is what brings blessings and not damnation, not condemnation, not, uh, not panic. It gives you peace of man. Joseph exhibited the fear of the Lord. And eventually he honored God. And what happened? He turned to blessing and lifting for him. Potiphar's wife wanted to have him. But I mean, I mean, Joseph said something. He made a statement. He said, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? The question is, what, I mean, God, fine, God was looking at him, but it was just him and the wife of the man. Yes, how can I do, he did not just call it wickedness, great wickedness, and sin against God. That is the fear of God. It's not the kind of fear, it's not panic, it's honoring God. That's the kind of fear I'm talking about today. He honors God. He keeps himself holy. In our Wednesday's uh, spiritual clinic, we have been talking about sanctification. You cannot actually attain sanctification without the fear of God. Because it is the fear of the Lord that will tell you that don't do that. And once you heed, you obey. There was a king in the Bible. His story is so, uh, is, is a pathetic one. Because he started so well. He prophesied. He was he joined. He joined the prophet to prophesy. I'm talking about King Saul. He joined the prophet to prophesy. That was when he was still doing what God wanted him to do. That was when he was still practicing the fear of the Lord. That was when he was doing the bidding of heaven. But there came a time. God told him, destroy the Amalekites. Utterly destroy them. And he did partial obedience. And that caused him his throne. Then an evil spirit came upon him. The Bible says, and the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. 
and an evil spirit. Hey, if you read that scripture, an evil spirit from the Lord, not from the enemy. An evil spirit from the Lord came upon him. Praise the name of the Lord. So, the Lord can deal with people that refuse to practice his fear. What did God, God say he should do? Go and destroy this. That was the instruction. He did not obey God. He did not reference God. He did not have the fear of God to do the right thing. And it cost him his throne. It cost him his throne. I am praying for somebody. The Lord will give you deeper understanding this morning. I can't hear you louder. Amen. Daniel was a man that exhibited the fear of the Lord. He honored God. No wonder he operated in great wisdom, in deep wisdom. How can you explain the fact that somebody had a dream? A king had a dream. And the king cannot remember the dream. Yet he called somebody, I need you to tell me my dream and the interpretation. Oh, how can it be? It takes someone with the fear of God, that has the fear of God, that is dining with God, that has the fear, just as the scripture says in that book of Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So for him to search the deep things, for deep to call unto the deep, the fear of the Lord has to be the basis. No wonder he went to God and God revealed to him. Sometimes you even have dream, you can't even remember it. You're not, you're not instructed somebody, tell me my dream and tell me the interpretation. It can only be with someone, I mean, someone with the fear of God, someone that has the spirit of God in him, is the only person that can achieve that. Daniel 6, 5 says, Then said this man, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. What is this scripture saying? They are trying to set trap for Daniel. And they concluded that there is no way we can get this man. This man feared God. He must pray every, every hour of prayer. He must kneel down to pray. That is the only way we can get him. Do you observe your own hour of prayer? When it is time to pray. You see, part of the fear of God. Don't forget, I said the real fear of God is the reference of God. You are honoring God. God, you are obeying God. That is the fear of God. It's not a panic kind of fear. It's a fear of respect, only respect. You are referencing God. That is the kind of fear I'm talking about. And that is what Joseph exhibited. That is what Daniel exhibited. That was what Saul lacked. And it caused him his throne. May the fear of the Lord be evident in your daily living. In the mighty name of Jesus. Look at Proverbs chapter 10. We read it earlier. Said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The knowledge of the holy is understanding. What is that scripture saying? Say when you reference and honor and respect God. Wisdom for living. Wisdom for lifting. We come. When you honor God. When you worship God. When you respect God. Wisdom will come. Abraham feared God. And as a result, honor, he, he honored God and trusted God for the impossible. Eventually, he got what he wanted. He got what God has promised him. He got immeasurable blessings upon him and upon his generation. And even God called him his friend. God called him a friend. What does the fear of God mean? What does it mean to fear God? Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 8 rather. Proverbs 8 verse 13. I read that verse very quickly. Proverbs 8 13. Proverbs 8 13. Say the fear of the Lord. This, I love this definition. Say the fear of the Lord is to what? To hate evil. Don't forget, I said, if you want to really be sanctified, fear of God must be the basis. So when you hate evil, you will not commit sin. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Number two, to what? Hate pride. Number three, to what? Hate arrogance. 
Praise the name of the Lord. You see, I have noticed something. I have noticed something. And, you know, where I work, I see, I see saw this. I see witness the same thing. A customer called over the phone and wanted something. Very cheap item. Doesn't want any attachment, maybe warranty or... So what I've noticed over the time is, it is those people, just like he said that, it is an empty drum that makes what? The loudest, the loudest noise. So most times, the people that are arrogant are not, the real, are not the people that are really, you know, doing great. There are people that are just coming up and they are just making noise. The customer I was talking about was so rude on the phone. And I was like, and what? I have attended to customers before that we purchased something like $10,000. But he wanted to buy $400 uh, goods. And he was so, the way he was talking on the phone, I was like, wow. People come in to buy, you know, thousands of dollars and they will not make any noise. Arrogance. Display of arrogance. So the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogance, and what? Evil ways. Evil ways. And uh, fraudulent mouth do I hate. That is the Bible definition of the fear of the Lord. So for me, the fear of the Lord is to have a sense of respect. Or no. Submission, worship, and service to God. That is the fear of the Lord. That is the fear of the Lord. This is a new church. What are you willing to do in your capacity? How many people are you, are you reaching out to? Talking to them about Christ. Oh, let us see. The vision God has given to us here is bigger than us. And God will surely send laborers into his harvest. And, uh, you know, one of these days we are going to have maybe a meeting so that we can share the vision together. And because when you know the vision, you can run with it. And I know that God, because whenever God gives vision, there must be provision. Because he's the owner of the vision in the first place. So, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogance, evil ways, fraudulent mouth. Do I eat? So I said to me, the fear of the Lord is to have a sense of respect, honor, submission, worship, and service to God. Service to God. It is having an appropriate reverence and only respect for God. That is the fear of God. So it's not a kind of fear that brings panic. No. It's a fear that you worship God. You reference him. When you see people doing evil, you don't do it. Because you have the fear of the Lord. Because that proverb 8, 13 said, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. You hate it totally. 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 We were being, I mean, told about uh, how to shun the, the I mean, the, the, is this celebration of uh, Halloween? It's not scriptural. It's demonic. We must hate evil. We should not allow our children to have the costume. Oh, join them. If you cannot beat them, join them. No. You must teach them the will of the Lord. The Bible said, teach yourself. I mean, teach your children. Train your child in the way of the Lord. In the way you should go. Say, and when he grow up, he will know what? He will not depart from it because it's already part of him. He has, I mean, he has imbibed all the training that you have given to him. I pray that the Lord will help us. Those who fear God, fear well. What did I say? Those who fear God, they fear well in life. You cannot see people that fear God and they will suffer. No. God must show up for them eventually. Those who fear God, fear well in life. Those who fear God fly high in life. They what? They fly high. Those who fear God fly high in life. Those who fear God go far in life. They do what? They go far. 
they don't stop at the limitation set for them. Maybe they are in, in the foundation or wherever they live. They go far in life. I am praying for you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Because you are in this service today, you shall fear well in life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let your amen be louder. You shall fly high in life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You shall go far in life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Listen, the fear of God does not demote. It promotes. Look at the life of Abraham. Look at the life of Joseph. Look at the life of, uh, of, of uh, Esther. Look at the life of, of Daniel. In foreign land, they were lifted to the highest position. I am praying for you. As you begin to imbibe the fear of the Lord and practice it, may the Lord lift you high in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord promote you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, I will take time to read this scripture. This is the part I love most in this message. Psalm 112 from verse 1. Because this tells us, this breaks it down for us so that you can see what you will benefit when you fear the Lord. Psalm 112 verse 1. Are you there now? I read. Say, blessed is the man that does what? So, what did the first thing the scripture says that whoever that fears the Lord is what? Is blessed. That is the word of God. Remember, the word of God is God. And the scripture says he has honored his word above his name. So his word cannot be broken. So blessed is a man that fears the Lord, that delights greatly in the what? What are his commandments? His word. His words. Those are his commandments. It's the scripture. Verse 2. Say he see not because he, he fears the Lord. Listen, because he, for the past two Sundays, we have been talking about generational blessings. So this is a follow-up to that message. But for you to attend this generational blessings we are talking about, the fear of the Lord must be in you. You must fear the Lord, you must exhibit it, you must pass it to your seed, and your seed will be blessed in return. It says in verse 2, because he fears the Lord, and because he's been blessed, verse 2 says, his seed shall be what? Mighty upon the earth. Remember, it started with bless his man, not the people. A man that fears the Lord. Bless is a man that fears the Lord. Bless is a man that fears the Lord. And he proceeds in verse 2. His seed shall be mighty on head. The seed of that man that exhibit the fear of the Lord. His seed shall be mighty on earth. He doesn't stop there. He said the generation of the upright shall be what? Shall be blessed. Generational blessing. Via the fear of the Lord. Generational blessing. Through the fear of the Lord. Generational blessing. Through what? The fear of the Lord. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. He doesn't stop there. Look at verse 3. He said, what? And riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness shall endure for how many times? Forever. Sanctification. So, when you fear the Lord, you become holy, you become conscious of what you do, and eventually you become a righteous man, and sanctification becomes the order of the day. Look at verse 4. It says, To the upright, there rises what? Come on. To the upright, what happened? In darkness, if there is darkness, it doesn't matter. Because you have the fear of the Lord, light shall come before you, and darkness shall flee away. Said to the upright, there rises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion, 
and righteous and full of compassion and righteous i will not have time to read but if you get some go and read the book of uh, ezekiel chapter 18 you can read from verse 24. it talks about the righteous when the righteous forsake his way his righteousness his good deeds what he has done will not be remembered again it means just like saul Saul was upright before. Saul was having a, sta a right standing with God before. But when he forsook the way of the Lord, when he did not do as God commanded, what happened? His righteousness, every good thing he has done was forgotten. So is that sin that he committed now that he was used to judge him? So please, it is a terrible thing to fall into the hand of an angry God. Let's try as much as possible not to fall into that, into that trap. We must endeavor to exhibit the fear of the Lord. And the same thing goes for the wicked. If the wicked man turns from his wickedness, verse 27 of that scripture, say the Bible says he will accept him. All his wicked deeds will be forgotten. Then he has a new life. Praise the name of the Lord. It means when the wicked the sinner turns from, you know, uh, he doesn't have the fear of God before. Now he has the fear of the Lord. Now he has embraced to honor God. He has embraced the spirit of the Lord. The, all the evil he has done before will be forgotten. And he will be made whole and he will be on the path of life. He will be on the path of life. I want you to take your time. Take your time. How do you honor God? How do you reference him? How do you respect him? Sometimes when you are not in the church, how do you feel? I was once a member, so I can say, I know how I feel. When, if anything happened, I couldn't go to church. I know I feel so bad. But I have found out that even some people don't feel anything. To some people, Sunday's worship is just one of the worship. No. You must start seeing it from a different point of view. How do you see it? It's part of the fear of God. It's part of reference to God. It's part of only respect to God. Say, don't for, forsake the, the, you know, the fellowship of the brethren. We must come together, worship God in spirit, in truth, so that we can receive from him. There is what is called corporate anointing. When we come together in unity of faith, things move. I mean, situations shift. There is a shift in the spirit realm. And we will be able to receive that which we want. I want you to listen to, it, to this. It takes the fear of the Lord to live right. It takes the fear of the Lord to live right and to depart from evil. The fear of the Lord will lead to holiness. The fear of the Lord will lead to generational blessings. The fear of the Lord will lead to sanctification. And the fear of the Lord will lead to paradise. It will take you to paradise eventually. You fear the Lord. You shun evil. You do not follow the crowd. Then eventually you will get to your expected end. Don't forget. God, the Lord says, For I know the thought I have towards you. Thought of, not of, to give you what? Your expected hand. Why don't you bow your heads and begin to thank God. Say, Lord, I thank you for your word you sent to me today. Begin to speak to the Lord. Bali katabo shikata bali yata. Thank God for his word. Thank God for his word. Shelebo shakata bali yata handalia. Thank God for his word. Now I want you to begin to talk to God. That Father, anything that wants to, that want to take away your fear from my heart, Father, destroy such a thing. Destroy such a thing. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I want you to lay your right hand on your chest. Lay your right hand on your chest. And begin to speak to your mind. Begin to speak to your mind. The scripture says, guide your heart with all diligence. For out of it proceed the issues of life. Begin to speak to your mind. 
Say, my mind, you will not go astray. You will not wonder. Kateli bosa taliata. My mind, my heart, receive the peace of Jehovah. Le shikataliata handalia. Yes, my heart shall not fail. My head shall not fail. I receive the fear of God in my inner man. Keteli bosa. The spirit of worship, respect, and reference of God possess me. My mind, you shall not follow evil ways. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. After the order of that Psalm 112 verse 1 to 4, I declare upon your life. Because you are here today and you have decided to exhibit and to begin to exhibit and imbibe the fear of the Lord. I declare the Lord shall bless you indeed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That blessing shall be transferred to your seed in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Your seed shall be mighty on earth in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The generation that comes after you we remember you for good in the mighty name of Jesus. For the, for the Lord is grace. We multiply upon you and his hand of prosperity will rest upon all you do in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As you go into this week, let the presence of God go with you. Amen. Let the glory of God go with you. Amen. I pray for someone that can say powerful amen. Let the Lord move you forward this week in the name of Jesus. Amen. You shall not be limited in any way in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your heart desire shall not be cut short in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, as many here that want to rededicate their lives, Lord, I pray for them. Let them encounter you anew in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As many that does not know you, Father, arrest them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we pray for every unsaved in this land. Let your fear move as flood of river and flood their heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Turn the heart of every unsaved people to you in this land in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, Father, you promise that nations will flow into this place. Father, let it begin to happen. Let there be manifestation in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everyone under the sound of my voice. Father, make them great witnesses for you in this land. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless them the way you have not blessed anyone in their generation. Amen. Thank you, everlasting Father. You, Jesus, mighty name we pray. Amen.